Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 6th of December, so we're now in the festive season and we'll get ever more festive as the month goes on. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. So the first video was diving into the new Azure Bastion Premium, which really adds two key features, a private only deployment, but also the ability to do session recording. So that's gonna be really useful for enterprises. And then a super quick video, I can now target M365 Copilot and Security Copilot with conditional access policies. If I wanted to lock those down specifically, I walk through quickly how to create the service principles that represent those services and then using conditional access with it. On to what's new. So, there, we now have the Neon Serverless Postgres as an integration with Azure. So that's a collaboration between Neon and Microsoft. So this Neon Serverless Postgres is a serverless offering, as the name suggests. So it can automatically scale and you can provision it sub-second. It's used today by a lot of SaaS applications that want that scaling and that very fast provisioning time, but also maybe where it has vector sports so over AI and machine learning type scenarios as well. And what this integration means is now through the Azure control plane, i.e. the portal, CLI, uh, the SDK, and because of the Azure integration, it can integrate with Entra ID for authentication, I can create, I can manage the neon organizations that power its serverless Postgres offering, and I'm buying it through the marketplace. So the bill will just be part of my Azure bill. Um, so now that is available in preview. PostgreSQL flexible index tuning has gone GA. So that's looking at the query store. So all of the queries against the query store and it can work out well which indexes are maybe not being used or a duplicate. So it can recommend you drop them. And it can also look on, well, if there was this index, it would improve performance. So we should go and create this index. And that's available on all of the tiers. Uh, so burstable, general purpose, memory optimized, I can leverage that. These next few, I'm pretty sure I talked about previously, but the PostgreSQL flexible performance parameters have now gone GA. So it's really just giving you certain performance related parameters you can tune to impact uh, performance characteristics. The PostgreSQL flexible high availability health status has gone GA. So now if I think about I have multiple instances for high availability, I'll be able to see the readiness of both my primary and my standby replicas. So if it's all healthy, it just show available. If there's some issue, it will show degraded and then it will give details of why it's degraded. Is it something to do with the high availability components? Is it something to do with the network? Is it something to do with many other factors? And because it's now gonna surface as that status, I can set up resource health alerts, which we do for many other things in Azure. And as part of that resource health alert, I can then trigger an action group. Remember an action group could send an email, it could send an SMS message, you can call a webhook, a function, a whole set of things. So instead of me having to actually go and look at it, it could proactively notify me if there is some degradation of one of my replicas. Because of course, if there's a degradation of one of my replicas, it may be lowering my resiliency because I wouldn't be able to fail over to it. So I can now go and set those things up. Um, network metrics now available in preview. So this is really focused on, at a VM level, giving me insight into things like the TCP connection backlog but also the postmaster process. So remember the PostgreSQL postmaster process is the main daemon for PostgreSQL. It manages the entire database system. So if there was some issue with its process and its performance, it would impact the entire system. So that would help me troubleshoot and prevent problems. PostgreSQL Flexible is available now in Spain Central and Mexico Central. So if I'm want to leverage the service. Hey, can I can now do that locally in the region. Cosmos DB, the MongoDB vCore now has a, well, it's actually three new offerings, eight, 16, and 32 Tebby bytes, which give you 16,000, 18,000, and 20,000 IOPS respectively. So basically now I can create bigger databases. I still have all the existing 32 gig, gigabytes all the way through to four Tebby bytes, but then I have those 
8, 16, and 32 additional options. And remember, of course, I can combine this with the new sharding capability. I can have up to five physical shards, which is also now GA. So if I combine things like the 32 terabytes, we have up to five physical shards. Well, now I can do hundreds of terabytes of actual storage. So that's kind of a, a cool thing there. And also now you have the cross-region replication. So I can have a replica in another region. It can be promoted to the primary, read-write, uh, if and when needed. Some Azure SQL database updates. And uh, the first one is actually related to the hyperscale offering. And what that lets me do now is I can get insight if there's throttling on the primary log. I now have it as part of the dynamic management function of DMF. It will show the component that's actually causing the throttling to help me maybe go and troubleshoot that. And also now for the zone redundant general purpose Azure SQL database, I can do one and three year Azure reservations, which helps me save money. Miscellaneous. So there were some new Chaos Studio roles in GA. Remember Chaos Studio is all about creating experiments, which basically inject certain failures into my environment so I can see how my application reacts ahead of it actually happening in an unplanned scenario in my environment. So, hey, a zone is unavailable. I can't get the key vault. I max out some CPU process. So there's now a Chaos Studio experiment contributor. So I can create, run, and see details for experiments. I can onboard targets. I can manage all the capabilities. There's a Chaos Studio operator. So they can run and see details for experiments, but they cannot create experiments. They cannot manage targets. They cannot manage capabilities. And then a Chaos Studio reader. Hey, I can view the targets, capabilities, and experiment details. I can't change or manage anything. And then Azure Health Services de-identification service has gone GA. So this is a really useful uh, capability when I think about maybe I'm dealing with health data that has protected health information, PHI. Because very often these days, I'm going to have this whole set of health data, and it would be super useful to be able to use that to maybe train a model. But what you can't do is train a model with a whole bunch of data that has true customer names in it, because then obviously, well, I'm not protected it anymore. So what this will now do is it will find, label, and redact or surrogate, i.e. put in replacement data that is realistic, but is no longer linking to that particular set of individuals, so that I could then use that unstructured text with training, for example, to a model. Or maybe I want to use it just for, for testing something. So it's going to remove all of that PHI from it. So it's using natural language processing to do that. And you can think that without this, I would have to manually go in. So it'd be a super time-consuming process, uh, very much prone to error if you miss something. So now with this capability, I'm going to use AI to go through, find that protected health information, and label it, and then actually replace it with some synthetic sets of data. But it's synthetic in a way that it doesn't devalue the data as for use with training or testing. And that's it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Till the next video, take care.